Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher Chris McCann. We invite you to our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional Bible studies. And now with his study in the Book of Romans, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the Book of Romans. Tonight is study number 22, Romans chapter 2, and we're going to read verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And uh, we're not surprised that the Lord is making reference to the day of judgment and in the day when God will. Uh, will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. That's a reference to the day of judgment, and we're not surprised because that's been the context of this passage. Remember, um, all the way back in verse 5, it says uh, in the last part of the verse, we're, we're from the middle to the end, uh, treasure us up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. The day of wrath, righteous judgment of God. And then even the language of the following verses. Tribulation and anguish to every soul of man, Jew first, also the Gentile. And then in verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. And then the parathetical thought began in verse 13 and concluded at the end of verse 15, which means the final statement of verse 12, as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law, is followed really by verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Verses 13 through 15 were like a, a side thought, um, side information. But really the statement in verse 12 is picked up again when we get to verse 16. And, and so it has everything to do with judgment day in the day. And we've learned that God calls judgment day a day or the day singular but we've also learned from the Bible that uh, a day can be viewed as 40 years and in the case of the day of temptation in the wilderness and or in, in the case of the day of salvation for many centuries. So it, it's just how the Bible is written, where an hour, the hour of tribulation, the great tribulation, the Lord uses an hour to represent it. It's 23 years. So we, we can't take the Bible literally on these kinds of statements. We have to search it out and then see how it applies. And so that's the way we can understand Judgment Day to be uh, from May 21, 2011, all the way through the year 2033. Okay. Well, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. And we'll look at the secrets of men maybe in our next study more closely because I think we're, we're going to fill up the rest of the time looking at the fact that Christ is the judge. And when we read this, that God, uh, in that day, judgment day, when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. That's, that's through Jesus Christ. That's telling us something. It's telling us something, and we know that uh, God did give all authority to the Son to uh, carry out the judgment. That's what we read in John 5, in um, verse 26 and 27, For as the Father hath 
life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. So Christ has the authority to execute judgment, and that's what Romans 2.16 is telling us. God uh, will judge the secrets of men through Jesus Christ according to the gospel, and even with the reference according to my gospel, that means according to the word of God. And, and, and we know Jesus Christ is the word. Now, I say that often, but it's always good to be reminded by the Bible itself. In John 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Then in verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Christ is the embodiment of the word of God. And when we read that the law uh, will judge, as as it did say in um, verse 12 of Romans 2, as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. The law will judge the sinner. The law is the word. They're synonymous, which is why it says in John 12, in John 12, verse 48, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words, of course, this is Christ who's, who's speaking, hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Jesus is the word, and, and you see, um, he's the one the Father has said. He's given authority to execute judgment. And then Jesus says, the word I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. It's not like he's taken that authority from the Father and giving it to another entity. No, he is the Word, the Bible that we have, the written Word of God. This book, it reveals Jesus Christ. It reveals the mind of God. It, it, we, we cannot separate the Holy Bible from Holy God, from Holy Jesus Christ, because the Bible, it says of itself, is truth, and Jesus is the truth, and the Bible is the truth. They're one and the same. Jesus is the judge, and the Bible is the judge. The word that Christ spoke will judge in the last day. There's no way to distinguish between them when it comes to the fact that the Word is the judge. Uh, yes, Jesus will carry out. He will, through his authority, execute the judgment. And what does it say in Psalm 149? In Psalm 149, read in verse 5, Let the saints be joyful in glory. And verse 6, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. What is the two-edged sword? According to, and I'm, I'm going to turn there because I, I want um, us to, to um, solidly have these things before us in Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. And here are the saints that let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. The word of God in their hand. And that's significant because it goes on to say in verse 7, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people 
to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye Jehovah. So the, the saints, with the word of God, the two-edged sword in their hand, will execute vengeance and execute upon the wicked, really, the judgment written. The judgment written, and this is the honor of all the saints, because Christ comes in the day of judgment with ten thousands of his saints. No, not literally that number, as but ten thousands represents the completeness. With all the elect, he comes to judge, and he's judging through the word. The word will judge in the last day. And so God opens up the understanding of the word. And, and that was the whole point when we spent a good deal of time on Romans 2, 5. The day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So judgment day is a time of revelation, revealing of the righteous judgment of God. And God reveals it. He he gives understanding to his people to see it, uh, uh, to to know it, and and to declare it. And as they do so, they are carrying out the judgment written. And they themselves don't judge any man, point the finger at anybody. No, they're only sharing what the Bible says. The door is shut. The sun. And the moon, uh, the the sun is darkened, and 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 so forth. All the things the Bible says carries out the judgment. But hold it. Uh, now, earlier somebody might say you said the Father gave the judgment to the Son. He's given authority to the Son to execute judgment, and now you're saying it's the saints who are executing the judgment written. Which is it? Well, it's both, because the Father gave the judgment, uh, that is, he made Christ the Word, the judge, and told him to carry it out, and Christ is carrying out through the revelation, through revealing it to his people, and moving his people to share these things, which will serve to feed the sheep, all the elect, that great multitude that's scattered amongst the nations, while simultaneously executing the vengeance, the, the things that are written, and enabling the saints to partake in the judgment process without actually pointing their finger at anybody. You see, it, it's amazing how God has designed things so that his people are not just declaring wrath, declaring fury. And, uh, you know, can, can you imagine if, if we were not given the task to feed the sheep, if God did not command his people to share the word to those that were saved in order that they hear and understand and and be comforted and, and spiritually fed. If, if we didn't have that job to do, then we would only have the job of sharing the word that people might be condemned and, and the wrath of God be poured out upon them and vengeance. And oh, how grievous, how even, uh, you know, far more grievous than it is now. That, that everything we would speak and, and declare it, it would only be, uh, like a negative. It, it would, it would only be towards, um, the vengeance, the, the wrath of God and, and, and to punish the people of the earth. And, and so, you know, the brilliant mind of God, he involves his people. Yes. He comes to judge with the saints. They will execute the judgment written. Um, and, and by the way, when we execute that judgment, that's as though Christ 
is executing the judgment, just as with the salvation plan of God, and the Lord used his people to carry forth the word, but it was Christ. And the Bible makes a point of letting that be known by uh, that scripture, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring glad tidings of good news. And then another place, how beautiful are the feet of him that brings glad tidings of good news because we're the body of Christ. And as we carry out the task, Christ is carrying out the task. You know, there there's a, a chain of command. The Father sends the Son. The Son sends his people. The Father gives authority to the Son to carry out the judgment. The Son gives authority to his people to execute the things written. And, and you see, they're not doing it on their own. They have to consult and learn regarding the things written. And, and therefore, it is Christ, the Word, that is judging in the last day, and, and we're just simply messengers. But anyway, we, we can see the tremendous wisdom of God to leave his people a task of feeding the sheep as they, uh, again, judge the world with him. And, and now this, this helps them. Uh, and, you know, in our minds, we're, we're, we're not desiring the, to the people to hear this word and be condemned and destroyed by it. No, our hope as we share these things, as eBible Fellowship teaches, I know it's our hope that those who are listening are people who God did save, and maybe there's some listening, and they might even be critical, hostile towards these things, but perhaps they were outside the church at the time God was sending forth the latter rain, and God did save them, and they are not aware of it as yet, or or do not realize that the Lord will draw them at some point in this prolonged day of judgment. And, you know, the Lord is encouraging us with that uh, information concerning the delay in drawing the elect and and the bringing forth the command to, uh, as Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father which sent me, draw him. And now we're learning that that uh, of God's plan after he's completed the city in Revelation 21, after there's the fullness of the spiritual city, New Jerusalem, then we read that uh, the, the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And, and, and so the Lord is encouraging us, and that's our focus because, and it really eases our minds since that allows us to have um, that goal in mind, we want the best for our fellow man. And we hope our fellow man is, again, one of that great multitude. And by the way, this all fits in with Revelation 19. Revelation 19, where the chapter is describing the final judgment of the world. And it says in verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Of course, it, it's apparent why that's the name that's emphasized. Christ has multiple names. The Bible uh, reveals multiple, numerous names for the Lord Jesus. But here, God wants to highlight the fact that his name is called the Word of God, and verse 14, in the armies which were in heaven followed him. Who are they following? The word of God. Who are these armies? The saints, all those that God has saved. The, uh, the armies in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth, what comes out of the mouth of God? The word of God. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. A sharp sword that, um, again, would tie in with the word of God, that with it he should smite the nations. There is the reference, John twelve forty eight. The word that I have spoken, 
the same shall judge uh, him in the last day. The word. And here it's the word of God, isn't it? Literally, we're told that's the name of, of the judge, the Lord Jesus. He, he's going by the name, the word of God. And out of his mouth, out of the mouth of the word of God goes a sharp sword. There, you can't get a stronger emphasis that this is the Bible. This is the Bible. It's the revelation of the righteous judgment of God in the day of wrath. And with it, with the Bible, he should smite the nations. And that's exactly what he's doing. That's exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing since May 21, 2011. He's smiting the nations. And then it goes on in verse 15 of Revelation 19. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And we've looked at this before. The word rule. The word rule. And in this context, it has, um, it carries the idea here is Christ seated upon the throne, the judgment throne, to rule the nations, um, not for their benefit or welfare, but in order to punish them, to destroy them. And yet, the word rule is the same word one time in John 21, translated as feed. When Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. And so uh, that's how we know that uh, we we just declare the information as written. Yes, it's judgment day. Yes, the door is shut. Yes, that means God no, is no longer actively saving. Yes, the elector on the earth to appear, to be made manifest before the judgment seat of Christ. Yes, Christ is ruling the earth. This is the time when Jesus is reigning on the earth. Uh, no, not for a thousand years, but for a short judgment day period, a prolonged period, but, you know, definitely short in comparison to a thousand years, just 22 actual years, according to the biblical evidence, 23 inclusive, taking us to the year 2033. And all these things, while punishing and and being as vengeance and wrath, um, destroying the unsaved inhabitants of the earth, are at the same time feeding the sheep. Feeding the sheep. That's the good part of the task that the Lord would have us to do. We are to, to feed the sheep. Now, just a couple of other things um, to to really see how how the the sword, the two-edged sword, um, or sometimes it's just sword in general, without the reference to two edges, is still a reference to the word, to Christ. Uh, here in Revelation 19, for example, in the last verse, verse 21, it says, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him, that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And so there, it's sword uh, earlier in Revelation, in Revelation 1, verse 16, and this is referring to Jesus, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun, shineth in his strength. And then in the next chapter 2, verse 12, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. And what is he telling them? He's pointing out some of their sins. And then in verse 16, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now, this is important. Because we know God has already judged the church. Christ was the judge of the corporate church. Christ came like a thief in the night to judge the churches and congregations of the world. 
How did he judge them? Through the sword of his mouth, through the things written. Uh, we, we can look back upon a completed judgment, uh, a spiritual judgment on the church entire, the whole church and all the world, the out, outward physical external church. And it was a judgment that was revealed by the Word of God, the Bible, carried out by the Word of God, the Bible, in, in every aspect where God revealed that the Holy Spirit had left the, the church, Satan had entered in, God um, revealed the light of the gospel was out within the church, and, and then he commanded his people to come out all through the things written, all through the word of God. Now, in Luke 21, you know, it, it said here, um, again, before we go there, we'll fight against them with the sword of my mouth. In Luke chapter 21, we find um, in this chapter, which is parallel to Matthew 24 and describing the the final judgment, the, well, the judgment on the churches, the great tribulation, and then it transitions into the final judgment of the world. In Luke 21, verse 20, when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And verse 23, but woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. It, 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 we're familiar with the language and it, it's language indicating God's judgment on the church typified by Jerusalem. But notice that first sentence in verse 24 and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And, it, not surprisingly, the word edge, the Greek word translated as edge, is the word for mouth. They shall fall by the mouth of the sword. And the sword is picturing the word of God. The mouth of the word of God. And, that's how the New Testament church has fallen, how it has come under judgment as judgment began at the house of God. God has destroyed the church in every way except um, literally there's still a, a spiritually desolate church buildings uh, littering the earth, and, and that'll be taken care of on the last day, but in every other way it's been destroyed by the things written. Likewise, God will destroy the earth in every possible way spiritually, all the way until that last day when the earth and the desolate dead church will be destroyed together with that eternal destruction. You've been listening to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your host and Bible teacher, Chris McCann. Visit our website at ebiblefellowship.org for additional studies. Until next time, may the Lord's perfect will be done.